Curious George flies a kite. This is George. He lives in a house the, of the man with the yellow hat. George is a little monkey, and all monkeys are curious. But no monkey is as curious as George. That's why his name is Curious George. I have to go out now, said the man in the yellow hat. Be a good little monkey till I come back. Have fun and play with your new ball, but don't be too curious. And the man went out. It was a lot of fun for George to play with the big new ball. The ball went up, and George went up. The ball went down, and George went down. George could do a lot of tricks with his ball, too. This was one of those tricks. He could get up on the ball like this, or do it this way with his head down. This was another trick George could do. He could hold the ball in his head like this. Look, no hands. What a good trick. But where did the ball go? George ran after it. The ball had gone into another room. There was a big window in the room. George liked to look out of the window. He could see a lot from there. He let the ball go and looked out. George could see Bill on his bike in the lake, the boat on it. George could see a big house in a little garden, and a little house in the big garden. The big house was the house where Bill lived. But who lived in the little house? George was curious. Who could live in a house that was so little? George had to find out, so he went to the big garden. The garden had a high wall, but not too high for a monkey. George got up on the wall. All he had to do now was jump down. So George jumped down into the big garden. Now he could take a look at the little house. And what did he see? A big white bunny and lots of little bunnies. George looked and looked and looked. Bunnies were something new to him. How funny they were. The big bunny was Mother Bunny. She was as big as George. But the little bunnies were so little that George could hold one of them in his hand. And that is what he wanted to do. How could he get a bunny out of the house? A house must have a door. But where was the door to the bunny house? Oh, there it was. George put his hand and took out a baby bunny. What fun it was to hold a baby bunny. And the bunny didn't mind. It sat in his hand, one ear up and one ear down, and looked at George, and George looked back at it. Now, he and the bunny could play in the garden. They could play a game. They could play, get the bunny. George would let the bunny hop away, and he would run after it and get it back. George put the bunny down. Then he looked away. One, two, run. The bunny was off like a shot. George did not look. Now he had to wait a while. One, two, three, four. He waited. Then George looked up. Where was the bunny? He could not see it. Where was it? Where had it gone? George looked for it here. He looked for it there. He could not find it. Where was the bunny? It could not get out of the garden. It could not get up the wall the way George could. It could not fly away. It had to be here, but it was not. The bunny was gone and all the fun was gone too. George sat down. He had been a bad little monkey. Why was he so curious? Why did he let the bunny go? Now he could not put it back in the bunny house where it could be with a mother bunny. Mother bunny! George looked up. Why, that was it. Mother bunny could help him. George got up. He had to have some string. Maybe there was some in the garden. Yes, there was string, and a good one too. George took the string back to the bunny house. Mother bunny went out the door. George let her out and put the string on her. And Mother bunny knew what to do. Away she went with her head down and her ears up. All George could do was hold the string and run after her. Then Mother Bunny sat down. She saw something, and George saw it too. Something white that looked like a tail, the tail of a baby bunny. And that is what it was. But where was the rest of the bunny? It was down the hole. Bunny likes to dig a hole and go down and live in it, but this bunny was too little to live in a hole. It should live in a bunny house. So George got a hold of the little white tail and pulled out the baby bunny. Then they all ran back to the bunny house. George did not have to put a string on the baby bunny. It ran after its mother all the way home. George took the string off Mother Bunny and helped them back into the house. Then Mother Bunny and the little ones lay down to sleep. George looked at them. It was good to see the baby bunny back where it should be. And now George would go back to where he should be too. When he came to the wall, he could see something funny at the back of it. George got up on the wall to find out what it was. He saw a long string on a long stick. A fat man had the long stick in his hand. What could the man with this stick that long do? George was curious. The man was on his way to the lake. And soon, George was on his way to the lake soon, too. 
The man took a hook out of his box, put it on a string, and put something on the hook. Then the man let the string down in the water and waited. Now George knew the string on the stick was to fish with. When the man pulled the string out of the water, there was a big fish on the hook. George saw the man pull one fish after another out of the lake until he had all the fish he wanted. What fun it must be to fish. George wanted to fish too. He had his string. All he needed was a stick, and he knew where to get that. George ran home as fast as he could. In the kitchen, he took the mop off the kitchen wall. The mop would make a good stick. Now George had the string and the stick. He was all set to fish. Or was he? Not yet. George had to have a hook. And on the hook, something the fish liked to eat. Fish would like cake. And George knew where to find some. But where could he get a hook? Why, there was a hook on the mop in the kitchen wall. It would have to come out. With the hook on the string and the string on the stick and the cake in the box in his hand, George went back to the lake. George sat down and put some cake on the hook, then let the wine into the water. Now he had to wait, just as the man had waited. George was curious. And the fish were curious too. All kinds of fish came to look at this line. Big fish, little fish, fat fish, thin fish, red fish, yellow fish, and blue fish. One of them was near the hook, and the cake was just what he wanted. George sat, and the line shook. There must be a fish on the hook. George pulled the line up. The cake was gone, but no fish on the hook. Too bad. George put more cake on the hook. Maybe this time he would get a fish, but no. The fish just took the cake off the hook and went away. Well, George could not get the fish. The fish would not get the cake. George would eat it. He liked cake. He would find another way to get the fish. Then George looked in the water. That big one there with the red tail was so near. Maybe he can get his hands on it. George got down as low as he could and put out his hand. Splash! Into the lake he went. The water was cold and wet, and George was cold and wet too. When he came out of the water, Bill was there with his kite. My, you are wet, Bill said. I saw you fall in, so I came to help you out. Too bad you didn't get a fish, but it is good the fish did not get you. Now I can show you how high my kite can fly. Bill went on. Bill put his bike up near a tree, and they ran off. There was a lot of wind that day, and that was just what they needed. The wind took the kite up fast. George was too little to hold it in this wind. A kite that big would fly away from him, so Bill had to hold it. George saw the kite go up and up and up. What fun it was to fly a kite. They let the kite fly for a long time till Bill said, I will get the kite down now. I must go home. You should too. But when Bill pulled the string in, the kite got into the top of the tree, and Bill could not get it down. Oh my, fine new kite. I cannot let go of it. I must have it back, Bill said. But the tree is too high for me. But no tree was too high for George. He went to the top of the tree in no time. Then, little by little, he got the string out of the tree. Down he came with the kite and gave it back to Bill. Thank you, George. Thanks a lot, said Bill said. I am so happy to have my kite back. Now, you may have a ride home on my bike. I will run back to the lake and get it. You wait here for me with the kite and do not let it fly away. George looked at the kite. Then he took the string in his hand. He knew he could not fly the kite in this wind, but maybe he could let it go up just a little bit. George was curious. He let the string go a little and then a little more and then a little more and then a little more. When Bill came back, there was no kite. There was no George. George, he called, where are you? Then he looked up. There they were, way up in the sky. Bill had to get help fast. He would go to the man with the yellow hat. The man would know what to do. George is not here, said the man with the yellow hat when Bill came. Have you seen him? George and my kite are up in the sky near the lake, Bill shouted. I came too, but the man did not wait to hear any more. He ran to his car and jumped in. I will get him back, he said. I must get George back. All this time, the wind took the kite up and George with it. It was fun to fly around in the sky, but when George looked down, the fun was gone. He was up so high that all the big houses looked as little as bunny houses. And George did not like it a bit. He wanted to get down. But how? Not even a monkey can jump from the sky. George was scared. What if he never got back? Maybe he would fly on and on and on. Oh, he would never, never be so curious again. If there's just one time he could find his way to get home. Hmm. Hmm, what was that? George could hear something. Then he saw something fly in the sky like a kite. It was a helicopter, and in the helicopter, hooray, the man in the yellow hat. Down from the helicopter came a long line. George got a hold of it, and the man at the yellow hat pulled him up. 
George held on to the kite, for he had to give it back to Bill. I am so happy you're back. To have you back, George, said the man in the yellow hat. I was scared, and you must have been scared too. I know you will not want to fight a kite again for a long, long time. You must give it back to Bill when we get home. Hooray, Bill shouted when George came to give him the kite. George is back, and my kite is back too. Then Bill took George by the hand and went with him into the little garden, and from the little garden to the big garden where the bunny house was. Here is one of my baby bunnies, Bill said. Take it, it is for you. A baby bunny for George? George took it in his hands and held it way up. It was his bunny now, and he could take it home with him. And that is what he did.